Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Good chilly morning from the southwestern desert here. The cold snap that's gone across the uh, country has reached all the way down here. And uh, this morning it was 41 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius on here somewhere. Uh, going up to just about 60 degrees today, again Fahrenheit. Uh, well, maybe into the 60s, I hope. <laughs> the sun's slowly warming it up, but it was chilly anyway. What we're going to look at today is this magical little hockey puck. This is from Chameleon Antennas. They call it a power compensator. Now what this device is supposed to do, according to their documentation, is increase the power handling capacity of a magnetic loop by two and a half times. That's interesting. The questions that uh, have been posted already in comments um, previously are, does it change the tuning of the loop. I can guess on that one that probably it does. Anytime you put anything uh, in the vicinity of a magnetic loop that's metal or that changes the, uh, the tuning of the, of the loop or the inductance of the outer loop, it's going to change the tuning slightly. I expect that that'll be the case. Um, but the other thing is, um, does it reduce the radiated power of the loop? I.e., if I'm pumping 5 watts into the loop and I put this on, um, do we reduce the effectiveness of the loop in reducing the voltage across the capacitor, which is the power limiting factor of a magnetic loop? Supposedly, this increases that power handling by two and a half times. And what I'm curious about uh, is, is that reducing the field? I mean, are, are you just, it's a compensator, right? Power compensator. Uh, and compensation is applying an applied opposing force to an active force in a system to balance it out. You know, like on a, a crankshaft in an engine, um, you've got that U-shaped bit that the piston connects to, and on that crankshaft, that throws it out of balance, you know, so when it's spinning, it would want to wobble due to centrifugal force. So they compensate by putting a heavier mass of metal at the other side of the crankshaft to balance it out, right? This is a power compensator. So it's compensating for additional power. Um, is that reducing the effectiveness of the antenna? Are you reducing the field that it generates? That's the main question I have with this device. Uh, I don't doubt that it's going to do what it ad is advertised to do and allow you to operate the loop at a higher power without arcing the capacitor over. We'll look at that too. Although I've got a bit of a conundrum there, I really don't want to arc the capacitor in my chameleon loop. Um, it's a well-built tuning box. It's a nice capacitor. If you arc across the plates in the capacitor, you can pit them. Where the arc originates and, and ends, it'll melt the metal just a little bit, and that pit will have little raised parts around the side of it that can then short across the plates and short out the capacitor, and then you've got to repair it, you know, with a, a really, really thin emery board or really fine grit sandpaper and wrapped around a feeler gauge or something where you can get in there and sand those pits down. It's, it, I, I've done that once before and it's tedious. And the uh, capacitor in here, the plate spacing is pretty close. I'll put a picture of it up here. And I know from experience with building magnetic loops, because I've, I've experimented and built quite a few in the past, that with this capacitor, uh, 10 watts is probably fine. 15, you're getting close to where it's probably going to arc. You know, you're not going to punch much more in there. With this device, Chameleon claims that you can operate CW at 30 watts on this loop. And at that power level, that capacitor should be lighting up like a Christmas tree with electrical arcs. So uh, we'll at least take it up to the level that they say it can go to, and we'll see if the capacitor arcs. So for the test setup, um, what I'm going to do is I've got the loop over here uh, at the front of the RV and back on the desk I'm going to put my field strength meter so I'll be measuring the near field, the magnetic field of the loop. Um, I've had people in the past say you really should be measuring the far field, the electrical or electromagnetic field that, that the magnetic field converts to when you get a certain distance away from the loop. 
one follows the other. Uh, I'm not making precise measurements of power. I'm looking for a relative change. Is it going to go weaker or stronger? So I'm fine measuring the near field. So I'll have the field strength meter sitting here on the desk next to the radio about uh, six feet away from the loop. So we should get a good indication. We'll put a known level of power in, say five watts, and we'll look at the field strength meter and then we'll put the compensator on there and we'll, without changing the orientation of the loop or the meter or anything, and we'll put five watts in again and we'll see if the field strength changes. So let's set up for that test. Alrighty, I am in CW mode. I've got the ICOM set to 5% power, which is 5 watts. Which, looking at my uh, MFJ meter up here, that's uh, what I'm reading. CW, uh, here we go. And it looks like uh, on this scale on the meter, I'm reading one mark below 50. Which, like I said, it's not calibrated to anything, but... Okay, that's our baseline. That's uh, without the power compensator. So now let's put the power compensator on the loop and we'll see if the tuning shifted and uh, then we'll try the power again and see what we see. Okay. There it is, installed. Now I'll orient the loop exactly the way it was before. I marked it so I could measure it, put it right back exactly the way it was. All right, that's all exactly the way it was. Let's go back and check the tuning on the Mini VNA. All right, this was our previous indication when I had the low SWR at uh, right around 21.03. Let's run it again and see if our tuning shifted. Oh yeah, it shifted quite a bit. All right, so I gotta expand my range here and figure out where it's at now. Uh, somewhere up around twenty point oh seven. So let's uh, or down around twenty point oh seven. So it shifted down. Let me re now we gotta retune the loop. There we go. So I had to move the knob about four degrees, uh, so it did shift the tuning. Okay, let's see if our power, if our field changed. Alrighty, as before, five watts. CW, nothing has changed here. The orientation of the loop is the same. Let's see what we see on the meter. Uh, it went up. That is unexpected. Sorry about the glare, but we can see the important part. I'm taking the RF power up to 30%, which would be 30 watts, which is what they say that the loop is now uh, capable of handling CW. And I'm going to key down, and I'm going to watch the capacitor. In fact, I'll let you watch the capacitor, too. I opened the door. All right, there's the inside of the box. And I'm about to key down at 30 watts. If it arcs, I'm only gonna I'm gonna let go right away because I do not want to damage the cap. But here we go. No arc. 
That is impressive. So it looks like this guy can indeed handle uh, 30 watts CW with that compensator on there. Had to ID there. So, can we get this guy apart? Little mounting bracket, aluminum. Looking down inside there, I can just see some green, looks like PC board material. Um, this plastic case has a seam along the edge. It's glued. They don't want you taking it apart. I'm not going to attempt to reverse engineer this completely, by the way. Um, if there's any of you that are interested in that, I'll bet you, if they, they haven't said, but I'll bet you they got a patent on this guy. Because this is, uh, you know, it, <laughs> this seems to work. And if it, if it, it, it's a game changer in magnetic loops. I'm surprised that they haven't done more marketing about this. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take my time here and cut through that seam. And it's going to take me a while to do so. But uh, hopefully I can get that seam opened. Oh, maybe I can get it opened right away. The glue's letting go. Got to be careful here. I don't want to break through and damage whatever's going on inside. It took me quite a while to get this far. Uh, I see why. They have glue all around this. What is going on in here? This looks like uh, maybe an inductor. I wonder if I can get the top half off. It's probably glued onto it from the top. Mm, okay, give me some more time here. Okay, they really didn't want you getting inside of here. Um, this was dumped full of hot glue, and this canister is actually threaded. I can start the threads, there we go. So it can thread shut, but they glued the heck out of it to hide this device. They're probably going to hate me for doing this, <laughs> but <laughs> nobody else has opened it. And uh, what the heck, let's just see what it is. It has numbers on it. Looks like a rating. 500 PK, 10 KV. Uh, I sort of recognize that symbol. Looks like a little chevron inside of a circle. Kind of reminds me of uh, Star Trek. And it says 8 KVA next to it. And then over here... 6102 and this is all that's in here um huh i guess i'll uh, look those numbers up and see if we can figure out what this is oh there's something under the glue there oh no there isn't that's just a that's just glue well i know what it is this is a 10 kilovolt high voltage ceramic capacitor um, with nothing connected to the other side of it. Well, I'm surprised. Needless to say, this power compensator is going to be a permanent fixture on this loop every time I deploy it. It works. Um, it works. <laughs> I don't know what else I can say. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, it uh, allows you to run, as they say, two and a half times more power into there without damaging the cap. And it does not seem to uh, diminish the uh, near field generated by the loop, so it shouldn't be diminishing the uh, the efficiency of the uh, you know what, what you're getting out um, as far as signal goes. Uh, Chameleon, it's magic, <laughs> and it works. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. 
Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.